Welcome back to Think Design Work Smart. I'm Alex Bolbak and I'm coming to you from the Mosaic Work Studios. And today, just a short video about the realization that I had while discussing some topics with uh, Thierry Depot. Let me show you quickly what we were chatting about. Um, he said on November 28, he posted on Mastodon. Today I experienced the killer argument against the use of uh, branches in uh, version control systems and of PRs, of pull requests. It disables continuous improvement and amplifies technical debt, or at least it works against fixing it. If you do want to improve, it requires a lot of self-convincing that it is worth going through the hassle of creating the branch and opening a pull request for review and then to wait for approval. And I think that's fair. And my answer was around this idea that indeed, if you need uh, an approval that is long and difficult, I can imagine that is quite an impediment. But it's also possible to avoid that. And there are a few things that I've done uh, while working with branches. I haven't really worked a lot with pull requests, but I've worked quite a long time with branches. And I think that the problem is not necessarily technical, but it's more socio-technical and this is what I will come back to. So when working with branches I've always made certain that the review was short and it was possible daily. So basically we had a team of developers and uh, I was usually in charge of doing co-reviews but the way we did it was we I did it for a while, created with them uh, a checklist of you know, things that we should look at and then just empower them. And I was always very clear, look, anybody from the team, you just make sure that somebody else is reviewing your code or that you pair program with them. So it didn't have to be actual code review, it could have been a pair programming session. and use the checklist to just make sure that you didn't forget certain things. And the checklist was very important in order to ensure that we don't make the same mistakes that we did in the past. What often happens, I think, is we make some mistakes, those mistakes end up in code, we call them bugs, but the real thing that we need to fix is the root cause. Why did we actually make those mistakes? And we need to be careful with that. And one of the ways of doing that is having checklists. Whenever we get to the point where we release something that has bugs, we find the bugs, we figure out the root cause. And then based on the root cause, we can add another topic to our checklist and just make sure that we look at it. So to me this is an active part of ensuring that we don't miss things and of course you could do this in various other ways and I think this is where it becomes very interesting. But to finish the story Everybody from the team was able to review as soon as possible based on this checklist. There was no reason to get stuck. And actually, when they got into this habit of, okay, well, can you please review my code? And it was quite fun. It was enjoyable because you would work with your colleague on, you know, on something that you felt was quite good. And um, he answered, I'm no surprise hearing this from you. We had again and again conversations about back and forth about a trunk based development versus branches. And I also have a video going in more details on that. 
But I think the biggest thing that I took from this conversation, and I really want to thank Thierry because he enabled this realization from my part, is I'm starting to think that any problem that we are facing with software development has multiple solutions on a socio-technical continuum. So in this case, you, if you imagine the most technical solution and on the other side, the most social solution, the most social solution would be something like um, ensemble programming or mob programming, where people kind of work together and eliminate mistakes and integrate code together directly. Whereas on the other side, you have the most technical solution, would be, which would be something like automated tools for uh, code review, maybe AI enabled <laughs> tools for core review. And on this continuum, you have a number of different solutions. You have pair programming, you have um, code review at a specific point in time, you have um, then you might have some specific tools uh, or a combination of automated uh, code review with something else and so on. So it's this interesting thing that I realized that you always have a continuum, a socio-technical continuum. And what I will try to do with this notion is in the future I will try to look at problems and think about how what would be the most social way of solving this and what would be the most technical way of solving this and then see if I can figure out in the middle what are the possible solutions. This is it for today. Um, I'm curious what you think. Please leave us a comment if you have any opinions, any questions, any you know, situations that you might want to share. I love going through comments and answering them. Of course, I also like if you would share, like, subscribe uh, to our channel. Subscriptions help us a lot. But um, I like uh, interacting with you. So comments are one way to do that on YouTube. Thank you so much for the watch and until next time, remember to think, design and work smart.